Well, over the past year, our Crossroads team has been involved in producing a number of top quality documentaries in a series we've called Canada Heart and Soul. These docs highlight a variety of people, places, and events that have defined our country. And the narrator is none other than our own Crossroads founder, David Maines. As you may know, he loves history, and in particular, he loves showing how our roots of faith in God have been a key factor in the blessings we've experienced as a country. So it's not surprising that the first documentary in the series, called In Search of Canada, explores our historical faith foundations. In choosing a short clip for you today, uh, and considering that this month of February is Black History Month, uh, it made sense to highlight Canada's role in what was known as the Underground Railroad, which served as a journey to freedom for many slaves. And the church played a key role in that effort. Watch this. It is commonly believed that slavery in North America was restricted to the United States. However, while it was not prevalent in Canada, it did exist. John Gray Simcoe in 1793 passed an act which prevented the introduction of new slaves into Canada and it also limited the contract of servitude for those that were already here. Simcoe's act meant that refugees from slavery were free as soon as they set foot in Ontario. But in 1850, with the signing of the Fugitive Slave Act in the United States, it became even more dangerous for slaves attempting to escape. Masters could move into the North, retrieve their property as slaves were referred to at that point, and take them back into slavery. And even if you were free black at this point, there was a huge chance that you could be sold into slavery because even if you had your freedom papers on you, you had no rights at this point. Canada was considered the promised land for African Americans fleeing slavery. The Underground Railroad was a huge freedom movement. It helped to usher between 40 and 50,000 blacks from the United States here to Canada by way of this secret route, uh, passages through forests, along rivers, safe houses. Canada was the North Star and the Underground Railroad for the escaped slaves from the U.S. South. And the Underground Railroad uh, that brought them north into Canada uh, was basically a Christian project. It was, uh, it was run by, uh, by the church. Uh, and uh, that was really the template for our whole approach to accepting refugees. All right. It's uh, really fascinating once you get into the history of Canada and how, you know, faith and the church... Uh, has played a key role in at important times in our history. And that, that documentary, uh, maybe people are asking, well, well, how do I see the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, uh, it has aired already, but what we're looking at doing in coming months is, is packaging together a, a number of these Canada Heart and Soul documentaries, about six of them, together and making them available. But you've got to wait a few months until we have that. But you can, uh, I thought I'd put a little tease in there. You can look forward to that. But uh, the, the whole, it, there's a lot of history that's covered in that uh, In Search of Canada doc. We were reminded this week, uh, the famous name, Rosa Parks, uh, winner of the Congressional Medal, mm. uh, would, would have been 100 uh, this week. And uh, school children in the U.S. Uh, had the privilege of riding the bus, uh, mm -hmm. the very bus where she was uh, adamant, refused to give up her seat. She would worked hard all day and she was tired and she became a change agent just by staying put. Mm. So it's the 100th anniversary of her birth, her birth. this week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, another one of the Canada Heart and Soul documentary series is called Welcome to Canada. It follows the journey of three of Canada's six million first-generation immigrants. Woven into these stories is a common thread of support from the church in welcoming and helping these newcomers in very practical ways. One of those stories is of Jamaican immigrant Don Meredith, who would eventually become a pastor and then a Canadian senator. Let's uh, pick up the story at the point where he receives a phone call from a surprising source. You know, it's the prime minister's office. Um, you know, was, you know, uh, Mr. Meredith, we've been trying to track you down. We we want to know, you know, whether you'd allow your name to stand for office. And I said absolutely. But I'm thinking that this is a long shot. And um, then a week went by, and I I hear I get another. I see the phone number come up again. And um, this time is uh, please hold for the prime minister. 
And uh, he says, Don, it's, it's great to, to hear you, and uh, it will be an absolute honor uh, to have you come and serve on the hill for me. And, and so I was ecstatic. I called my wife right away and said, honey, this, this is for real now. And in February 2011, Don Meredith and his family traveled to Ottawa, where he was appointed Canadian Senator Don Meredith. It was just uh, an amazing moment in my life, one that I will never forget. As an immigrant coming to this country, and, and I say this to young people especially now, that this country has a lot to offer. Uh, for me, coming from the hills of St. Anne's to Parliament Hill, that's, that's, that's my line. You know, growing up in the, uh, you know, mountainous parts of Jamaica and in, in, in St. Anne's, and, you know, seeing the, uh, the depravity and the poverty that I grew up in, and, and to see what's possible. For me, it was just, just encouraging to say, you know what, there are barriers uh, to success, but through hard work and my faith in God and love of family, those barriers can be overcome. All right, Senator Don Meredith. He's been a guest several times on 100 Huntley Street, and he does such a tremendous work in helping uh, inner city youth and, and uh, you know, combating violence that goes on. And, and so uh, great to feature him as one of the, uh, the immigrants in that doc, Welcome to Canada. You know, all of the documentaries are not just heartwarming, they are inspiration. Mm -hmm. Messages of hope. Absolutely. From our real history. And these documentaries will have a long shelf life and will continue to, uh, to inspire and have a powerful impact on many people uh, for years. And so I just w wanted to show you a couple of those samples there and to thank you for your support of this ministry because it goes uh, far beyond just 100 Huntley Street. 